Hello, my soccer universe. Yes, yes, yes. Austria got their important win over Poland and it looks not good for qualifying for the next round because, you know, you have three points. That's always good. You have a positive goal difference. And Poland is already eliminated thanks to goal list draw. The first goal list draw of the tournament between the Dutch and the French. We'll talk a little bit about that one because it, it wasn't really a goal list draw. If you watch the game, it was just missing chances. We also had a very, and again, three o'clock kickoff. It gotta be emotional. Yes, it was emotional. Whenever Ukraine does something good, it's bound to be emotional. But it was a really good win for Ukraine against a still strong Slovak team. But that opens up Group E as well. But we gotta start jersey matchup, bingo! I got everything right, but it was not that hard to be honest. Slovakia against Ukraine would always have been a very beautiful blue against yellow affair. Austria, Poland, yes, Poland will be in all white. I knew that because you know you don't want to have a white and red against a red and white team, so Austria had to play in black pants, which I don't like this time around. When they had this kit, the black pants looked actually fine, but with the current one, I'm not sure. I'm not sold on that look uh, overall. And yes, in 2008, Austria played in all red, which is something I probably would have preferred there. But hey, you go. And then I knew that the Netherlands will play in all orange, so the French are bound to be in their away kit as well. Although I really think that the home kit would have done fine too. Step it up, UEFA. I'm gonna start before we go all in this Group D action. Starting Group E with the Slovakia-Ukraine game. That in the end maybe was a little bit of a lucky win for Ukraine. I think it was more of an even affair because in the first half the Slovaks were much better. The Slovaks had more of the game, uh, really took it to Ukraine, created chances and then came from a throw-in where then a Haraslin cross goes across the box and got longer and longer and longer and they forget about Schranz on the far end of the goal and there's only Sinchenko who cannot get to the ball, Schranz heads it in. It's 1-0 for Slovakia and Ukraine had to really work themselves into the game. It seemed a little bit disjointed everything there. However, they got their chance, they hit the post once. Second half, it was more of Ukraine there, but still, Slovakia is a very solid and sturdy team, I gotta say. It was probably the team that I was least looking forward to, but they have proven me wrong so far. It was then again a counter-attack that was really weirdly played because it was Mudrik who had the ball and then plays a really bad pass to Dovbik. But his hold-up play then allows in the end Sinchenko to play it over to Shaparenko in the box and tap it in. 54th minutes, it's 1-1 one, one. and then the game was kind of a little bit tightish on the knife's edge. We knew that Ukraine need to come out and uh, Slovakia were defending for their lives because you know with four points it looks all the better. In the end it was a really well taken goal where Shaparenko sends Jaremczuk who really puts the ball, it was almost like a Bergkamp goal, takes it off the air, kills basically the movement of the ball and then lobs it over the goalkeeper. It looked a little bit like in play that he was just getting it over the line but there was quite some skill involved so great goal by Jaremczuk. I have to say I didn't experience it first as such a great goal but when you see it in the replay that was really 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 fine stuff. As I said maybe Slovakia I had a little bit more of the statistics when I look at the overall stats it was more like a draw but it's a huge win for Ukraine. Whenever Ukraine wins this means something especially for the people in the war-torn country. I was very happy about that. I was also happy that in the closing stages of the game Lask's own Talavierov came on and yeah he was a little bit involved as well so to avoid a Slovak equalizer and that makes me also happy we had a Lask player at the Euros. Great. But as you may imagine, the majority of this video will focus on Group D and especially on Poland against Austria, me being from Austria, of course. This was a must-win game, everyone saw it. I mean, yes, with a draw you kind of stay in the running, but then you need to beat the Netherlands and, you know, given the way the evening went, yeah, it was not really, really the desired result. It also meant that if you lose, and that's exactly what happened, you're out. So there was the specter of elimination as well, which put real pressure on the game. However, Austria started brightly and curiously enough, Ralf Rangnick completely changed his defense. He went with Linhardt and Trauner and you know, 
the way Trauner played already against France, I was really happy to see him get a start. Another player with a very strong Lask background. Now he's captain of Feyenoord, but he used to be also captain for Lask for quite, quite a while. And probably the best player that Lask had in the last 10 years. Also gotta say that. In any case, it started really brightly for Austria. They pressed high, they had the poles totally stuck back into their own half. That's how I expect Austria to play. Porsche already with an early shot was knocking on the door, but it was Mvene on the left side who was tirelessly working and Trauner organizing at the back. But in the end, it was a throw in by Mvene that goes to Trauner, goes back to Mvene because it's clear. And he crosses in and Trauner heads it in. And I think this was such a stalwart of Lusk's play that Trauner is heading in goals. That was completely missing at Feyenoord. So I was happy to finally see him score again. And what was even sweeter is that I called this goal. Literally seconds before I told my girls it will be a cross. And then Trauner is gonna head, head it in. Because with that head you just can only head it in. That's exactly what happened. It was a really cool moment. Very happy for that. However then Austria let off and let the Poles back into the game. It is okay maybe to take a little bit of a breather, but they actually pulled Poland back and Poland didn't get much better. It was just that Poland have some really dangerous players up front that can always cause trouble. And if you let them, they will come. And suddenly there were too many dangerous areas. There was a shot by Zalewski on and then Poland, you know, Getting closer and closer and closer, then it was a corner kick where suddenly Poland have in front of goal four attackers against three defenders from Austria. It was never gonna work this way. In the end, the ball hits Trauner and on the rebound, Piontek puts it in internet. It's 1-1 one, one at the half hour mark and I really felt, no, this is not going well here. And I was really annoyed, especially at Grilic, who was not very effective. But also Arnautovic up front, I thought, did not have the greatest game, but he was never really involved. There was also a lot of missing passes when you go forward. Whenever you had the ball, you could not hold on to it. I really did not like this phase of the game. However, Rangnick made the correct change at the half. He took Grilic off, he brought Wimmer on, which means you have a lot more verticality, a lot more speed coming into the game. The game at that point was really tight. It was on a nice edge. You could feel the pressure on it. However, Ralf Rangel was turning the screws and just at the moment when I really thought the game is going one way because Trauner pulled his hamstring and I'm fearing he's out but you know with Kevin Dunn so for Austria I'm not worried. I'm just a little bit gutted that Trauner will not continue. So Trauner came off in my opinion, Austria's best defender Lewandowski is coming on and Swiderski was also coming on. So he basically, uh, Coach Probius exchanged the strikers up front. But just a few minutes later, Mvene off, who was tirelessly working, but he was getting tired, but Pras came on. And so you had the same energy, maybe with a little bit more offensive power as well. And that paid off because now Austria were controlling the flanks. They were also starting to control back the midfield. And Pras from the outside played a pass in, and in my short video I did not give him the credit, credit for that, where Arnautovic then makes a dummy over it, so Baumgartner can step into the box and he makes it 2-1 in the 66th minute. What a relief that goal was, and suddenly Austria had the game that they wanted to have, with Poland coming out and they can press on and can hit them on the counter-attack as well, which is that won't happen when Sabica were running through, was trying to run Chesney. Chesney basically takes him down, although it was more with his head, and you could see that Savica wanted the penalty. Anatovic makes it 3 1, and that settled the game. And then it could have gotten ugly for the Poles because there was a great post shot that Chesney could save. And then I think there were a few other chances. I mean, this could have been then 4 or 5 1 as well. I think a 3 1 is more reflective of the game because in the end, Austria were the better team. They just let Poland back into it. Uh, with these three points and having this two goal win, meaning you have now a positive goal difference, so meaning even with a draw against the Netherlands and positive goal difference, you look really good. You already look good advancing because the way other groups are panning out. But I would say with a point against the Netherlands, you're pretty safe. Let's put it this way. And that is a huge relief. And then Poland was in serious danger of getting eliminated if the Dutch and the French play out a nil-nil draw. I mean, I was personally hoping for a... French win 
because that would mean that the Dutch fall behind Austria and then a draw also sees you on to the second place, which is a really good position you want to be in because third place you have to play a first place team and at the moment we will look at it. It doesn't look as bad, but this could end up being big opponent as well. Looking at it then ahead of the game, I thought, hmm, well, I want the France win and probably and I would expect the France win and Mbappé of course was not playing it was clear that he's not gonna play i mean uh you don't want to risk him but the french should have more much attacking for um but the french should have enough attacking threat up front anyway but looking at it a draw suited both teams quite well because both of them are four points france having to play a poland team already eliminated although this is always dangerous against the poland team because the last game is where the poles usually tend to show up but you know, you have then the game against Poland where that are eliminated, where you can get the three points that will three, see you through to the um, next round, whereas the Netherlands have to play a tough Austrian team, where there's a draw not unlikely. But you know, you gotta always feel into the competition. But I felt that a draw is convenient for both sets of fans. Of course, tons of Dutch fans there. It was also a lot of game was played in Leipzig and there was a lot of Leipzig connections as well you know Pomecano for instance having played for Leipzig then on the other side Xavi Simons is currently playing for Leipzig the game actually was quite good early on the Dutch had already pretty big chances Frimpong running through the longer the game went the more I felt that the French had control of it but they also were missing their chances and there were plenty of chances and I mean for me the most glaring was when Rabio could have taken a shot and his curse is over to Griezmann well, it's so bad that Griezmann cannot score. If Griezmann scores there, I think we get a really exciting game. The game was not bad. As I said, it was up and down. They played some nice stuff. Second half then, the French took more control of the game. Again, brilliant attacks in there. I think it was a Kante playing a ball that is also then played over to Griezmann. He again cannot pull it in. The big situation, of course, was the disallowed Xavi Simons goal in the 69th minute, which also I felt was all right because Denzel Dumfries is really standing right next to Mike Magnon. In an offside position, he's interfering with play, even though Mike Magnon is not diving, but it is pretty clear to me that is not happening. We don't need to look at whether Mike Magnon would have dived or whatever. It's pretty clear to me that this cannot be allowed. That it took forever, yeah, this is... It was an English referee after all, so decisions take forever. After that, yes, there were attempts, but uh, it was always going to end in a, in a draw. And that's the first nil-nil draw, especially between those two. Maybe a little bit odd, but on the other side, it was kind of written on the wall as well. The Dutch and the French enter the last match day on four points each. And let's see where this will go, I think. All three teams from this group will advance, looks quite likely at this moment. We didn't also see big changes in the projections because Austria were already in this third place projected. So Group D did not change much. There were a few changes in Group E where suddenly Romania is in first place, Slovakia in second, Ukraine go ahead of Belgium. You see also third place uh, teams. It's now you Austria and Ukraine dominating that one ahead of Slovenia. The Czechs still have to play, but Croatia and Scotland have already played. So they are more on the outside looking in, having just little points. So the big changes in the bracket are all Group E, but they're all favored to be eliminated. We have now Slovakia sitting in second spot playing the Netherlands. That's going to be an elimination most likely. We have Romania now in uh, first place playing Austria. You would favor Austria there as well, although this Romanian team have shown quite some nice stuff. We have to see them in their other two games. And then Ukraine will play England and you also would expect England to move on. So in that sense, not much has changed. And it's still weird to see a quarterfinal between Austria and France as they have played in the group as well. But the game will be played in Berlin, so if that was really to happen, Austria will play all the group opponents in Berlin and having their training camp in Berlin, this would also be nice. Today we have the last long match day and honestly, while I enjoy this, it's also quite taxing to have three games to watch while also doing work and other things as well. So I'm happy that this crazy week is over and the schedule eases up a little bit, allows me also more time. We start with Georgia against the Czech Republic in Hamburg. Really look, really looking forward to see Georgia. Turkey against Portugal in Dortmund. That will be an amazing. This I expect an all Turkey sellout there with a 
few pages of Portuguese fans and then Belgium with a massive game where they need to get a win over Romania otherwise they're already facing elimination that's something that no one would have expected out of that any case please let me know what you thought about the games today give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video subscribe to my channel if you want to see more I'll talk to you soon about more things in my soccer universe bye hey there I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too also please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe and with that have a wonderful day bye